All right, here we go. Now we're on to the fun part. So everything we did up to this is what we really wanted to do, which is stylize a photo. So we just finished with the gradients and I think they look great. Uh, you can adjust your gradients however you want them. And if you don't like them, uh, you, can, you can tone them back a little bit, uh, reduce the opacity, um, etc. I probably leave mine right at about 90%. I'm okay with that. So we've got gradient selected. We have a, actions up here. We're going to go to toning and we're going to hit play and see what happens. That was a lot faster than the other ones. So we have created a toning folder for us and it's done a couple things in here. Now this is completely subjective. So you can do whatever you want in here. I've just kind of thrown a few layers in here. For some final adjustments and um, so I've done a curves adjustment where I've just lifted the mid-tones a little bit and you can go in here and you can adjust it to taste um, however you want to adjust it so I will typically go up to the histogram here and click the little exclamation point saying that I've been peaking and it's going to build accurate histograms based on the color we have showing. So you can see we've got lots of stuff in the upper exposure areas. And down here in the shadows, we've lifted them a little bit. And then there's just a tiny little bright spots. And I'm pretty sure they are for the shines on the glasses there. And so um, you can adjust your um, curves levels uh, however, however you'd like to. Um, I typically leave mine... Um, up a little bit and then uh, go into this curves layer. Now this takes just the shadows and just drops those down a little bit and you can adjust those to your liking. Um, there's two ways of doing this. You could do it here like I've done it or you can uh, do it in the next step which I'll show you which is applying the Nick film grain. <clears throat> there's also a curves layer here which we should probably call curves layer for blue. And that's because uh, this particular client likes to have uh, a faded uh, look to her photos. Um, this is, of course, completely subjective, and you can do it any way you like it. But um, I take the blue channels that I learned from uh, uh, another Photoshop master uh, by the name of uh, Mike at uh, Vibrant Shot, and uh, he would take up the um, blues a little bit in the shadows and you see you can be you know overly aggressive with it but there's really no need I typically go to about maybe 10 for this particular client and then you can take the highlights areas and bring them down into the yellows and it doesn't look like you've done much but you really have um, you can take them down as, as far as you want to go with it but you know I like a cream tone right around 250 251 um, and then the out the uh, input down at the bottom, maybe the output is about 10 or 11 uh, for the style there. And then um, you can uh, go into the brightness and contrast and you can um, adjust this however you like. If you want it more contrasty, of course you can make it more contrasty. This particular client uh, likes hers um, with a washed out look. So that's what we're going to do with this photo after this step above it. Now this uh, color lookup is a LUT and there's different types of LUTs that you can choose from that come stock <clears throat> or you can upload your own. Um, for this client I think maybe a pink, a pinker 2395 Kodak for the Fuji Eterno would look good. I'm using a Panasonic uh, camera and this this particular one has a more of a pink issue so if I bring that opacity up you're gonna see it uh, a lot. Um, but I think that's a little bit too aggressive. So what I'll do is I'll take it down to about uh, 60, maybe even 50. Okay. And then I'll go back to this brightness and contrast. And I will remove the contrast to give it that washed out uh, look and feel. And remember, this is completely subjective, so you can do whatever you want here. And I will reset the histogram and let it analyze it again. 
I'll make sure that I'm still within my levels. Um, I might blow out a little bit on this shine uh, in favor of a little bit more brightness on the photo. Just to give it that nice little pop there. And um, I think I may actually go into the blue channel again on the uh, Curves 4 Blue. And uh, I'll take that blue and I'll, I'll pop that up to like 16 or 17. And I really like that. And then, you know, you get to a certain point where um, where you like it and you're happy with it. And then you can um, take the whole thing and you can adjust the opacity because it is pass through. So you can, you know, I'll take it down to 45% if that was too much or maybe 75%. It's a little better for you. Um, I'm going to leave mine at 100 um, because I know my client and I know that she likes this style. <clears throat> so now that we're done with the toning, uh, we're just going to add some final touches. Um, and that's right here in the workflow for JJ Custom. Uh, we've got uh, the gradients done, the toning is done, and uh, now we're going to go into some film grain. And if you just hit play on this, it's going to run its magic. And dun da da da. <clears throat> what it's doing is uh, create a stamp visible layer and then applying a nick filter for film grain that I've already set up and then once it's done it's been uh, created as a smart filter so we can go in and edit it which is great double click on color effects pro right there and once it opens up, we can really fine tune the grain. Now, grain is also subjective. Many artists are trying to get rid of what we call noise, but we're actually going to give it a film grain. This particular client likes film grain, so I'm going to give it to her. So it's at 20% film contrast, but we can drop that down. Um, I'm gonna drop it uh, probably down to about maybe 5% contrast. And then um, the grain per pixel is at 450. Now let me show you what that means. Um, you can see the grain in here. If we turn this off, uh, we don't really have grain. Uh, but to give it a nice feel, like kind of like an old photograph, we can add some grain. Now out here, you don't really see it. Um, but uh, you can go in and um, decrease the grain per pixel to give it more grain. I know her, she likes uh, the grain to be obvious, so I'll drop it down to about a 415, 414, and I'll make it just a little bit harder. And then um, I leave the contrast where it's at, and I'll try to uh, zoom out and see what that looks like. And you see we've given it just that nice little touch there, which makes it look really good. And then we'll just hit apply or okay. And we'll see what it gives us on the full full screen there. And voila. There we go. She's got her nice washed out photo. Um, looks a little bit desaturated. It did a couple things for us uh, throughout this process. It allowed us to blend some of our edits in the face uh, to where it doesn't look like it's been photoshopped. Um, this looks like a natural photo. Any blemishes that were there are reduced greatly. And grain just gives it a nice look and feel. Also, the printers will like it as well. So, there you have it. There's the full photo. And we can uh, close these things or unexpand them. And let's take a look at what we've done. So, if you just go to the bottom layer, the background layer, and you hold Option and click it, you can see the before. And you can see the after, which will probably take a second because that's a lot of layers to load. And there you have it. So uh, now that we've finished with the photo, we're going to want to save it. Um, you hit Command S and it will start saving. It shouldn't take too long. And once it's done saving, we can export this photo which is my favorite part because I can't wait for these things to show up on my clients' feeds in Facebook. <laughs> I'm gonna show you how to export this file um, properly for, for Facebook, for digital, and then also for 
you to take to a printer. So if you hit export and you hit export as, when the export as dialog box finishes loading a preview for you, we got a couple things this computer is running here. Running at 90, 95% of my juice. Yep. So it'll take a little bit longer because we're also saving at the same time. All right. So this automatically defaults to a PNG, but you can change that right to a JPEG, which is what Facebook loves. Keep that quality at 100%. Keep the bicubic automatic on and leave your canvas size unless you want to change the uh, image uh, size or scale. I leave it at full. And then uh, convert to sRGB needs to be checked because that's how Facebook handles uh, the RGB as compared to the pro photo RGB that we've been editing in. So as we've changed it to JPEG, you can see the image drops down to about 15.8 megabytes. And then we just hit export all. And now that folder that we've created called exports digital we can add that photo in there. It's already the same name. And then just hit export. And then it's done. Now we can go over to our exports digital folder and we can look at this photo. And here's what she looks like exported. I think my client will like this photo. She loves these kinds of photos and she looks beautiful in this photo. So what we do next is um, we prepare it for them to take it to a printer. And the way you do that is you go File, Save As, and we're going to save this in the Exports Print TIFF folder. We're gonna change the format to TIFF, which is uncompressed, and we're gonna uncheck layers. It's going to save it as a copy with this selection, which is fine. But we want it to be a uncompressed file that the printer can have access to. The other option is to save it with the layers and let the printer handle it. Um, you can do both. I'll show you what that does. So we're gonna export it in there and save it in there. And then it's gonna give us a bunch of options. Just go ahead and leave this the way it is. And we'll hit OK. And this is telling us that it will increase the file size, which is fine. Um, don't show again and hit OK. And then this will take a second because it's doing it in a large uh, format and it's going to pop it in right there. Almost finished. 96% down here. And writing file, there it is. So this is a TIFF with layers and look at the size of that. It's so huge. You're not gonna give that to a client. Um, not gonna share it over the web. It's, it's just way too large to be dealing with. So we're gonna delete that one. And we're gonna go back to this. We're gonna go file, save as, and we're going to uncheck the layers. And it says file must be saved as a copy with the selection. That's fine. Um, we make sure that we are in the exports print TIFF and it's going to save it as a .tif file and as a copy. Okay, so we hit save. Did I do that right? No, I did that wrong. Go file, save as. All right, deception pass, exports, print, TIFF and uncheck the layers, uncheck the copy. Ah, I see. TIFF, embed, color profile, there you go. So we'll just hit save, and then I believe this is correct. So let's take a look. The file shouldn't be too big here. Yeah, there we go. And it's 95.6 megabytes. This is much easier to share, but it's big enough for a printer to add sharpening when he prints the photo. He's gonna want to know how far away the people are standing when they're looking at this photo hanging on the wall or something. So 
If she takes it to a printer, um, he can sharpen this and not lose any of the quality. So there you go. And that's just about it. One other nice thing, since we left Lightroom open and we named our file correctly, our after photo is right there. But all we have to do is right click, go to metadata, read metadata from file. Because remember, we're referencing these files. So there you go. Now you can see the before and after right inside of Lightroom. If you need to edit a photo later, um, you've saved the original PSD file in the PSDs. There she is. And also, um, you have the uh, Deception Pass Lightroom catalog, which is what we're in here. And the export digital for the Facebook uh, is right there and I keep them all in there so that when I share them um, they are easily uh, you know findable and then uh, yeah so there you have it there's the photo there's the process now you can go on to your next photo and uh, do the process all over again thanks for watching and I uh, hope you learned a lot about Photoshop and uh, if you have any other questions or anything like that, put it in the comments below. And uh, also you'll find links in there for uh, all the actions on all these videos. Have a great day.